Hey everyone, welcome to class. My name is Flo. Today I want to share a gentle flow practice with you, which is great if you are new to the practice, if you just want to take it easy, or if you don't have much time but still want to move. And towards the end, we will also do a short meditation. I highly recommend you have some blocks nearby, especially if you're new to the practice. If you do not have blocks, you can also use books. That's just to extend your reach in case the ground is too far away. We have over 150 more videos just like this one in our beginner yoga playlist, which is linked up here in the corner. And it's not only great if you are an actual beginner to yoga and new to the practice, but as I said, also if you want to take it easy, if you want to do a gentle flow, you can head there and practice with me and Bri in more than 150 or so videos. Today's class, we will begin on our back in half Shavasana. Come onto your back, bend the knees, feet on the ground. Let me just take a moment here to arrive. Close your eyes for a moment. Have the arms alongside your body. Notice the weight of your body, how it's supported by Mother Earth beneath you, by your mat. Start to deepen your breath, become more aware of the breath. And slowly dial in a rhythm that's about four or five seconds inhale and four or five seconds exhale. And we want to breathe only through the nose. And this is not about the poses, if you can do the poses, how they look. It's more about how they feel and we want to use them to create space to open the body so that we can breathe better. And so that ultimately we can sit more comfortably and longer in our meditation. core practice and the most important practice of yoga is meditation because it's the practice and the path within towards and directly to your true self give yourself permission to be here Take the time for yourself in this moment. Slowly blink your eyes open. Gently move the feet a bit closer to the hips and we start to press into the feet to lift the hips up. Continue with those slow and deep breaths. Again, four or five second inhale four, five second exhale. Especially the exhale is important. Breathing less is very beneficial. Feel the engagement of the glutes, feel how you're opening the front of the hips, the front side of your body. Keep a gap between the chin and the chest. Let's take one more deep breath in. Exhale, lower the hips all the way down. Very good. Just bring the feet and the knees together. And we simply bring the legs over to the right side for a twist to the right. The lower body is twisting to the right. The upper body is twisting to the left. If you want, you can extend your left arm out to your left side. Relax into it, breathe into it. Use your right hand to bring your legs back to center and we simply do the other side. Bring the legs over to the left. Extend your right arm out to your right.
with your left hand, bring your legs back to the center. Let's hug the knees into the chest so we can curl into a little ball and then rock forward and back slowly. Eventually cross the ankles, roll over the knees. Let's come into a tabletop position. We're coming onto all fours. Come onto the toes, slide the hands back, keep the arms straight and we simply lean forward, shift forward, the shoulders over the fingers, over the wrists, lean back. Shift forward, back, forward and back. Shift forward and then we make a circle to the right, down to the left and up, clockwise circle. And switch directions, counterclockwise. Last one. Very good. Slide the hands a bit more forward, the feet a bit more back, untuck the toes. Few rounds of cat cow. So on your inhale, you lower the belly, arch the back, look forward, draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Exhale, round the back, push the ground away, chin to the chest. Two more just like that. Inhale for, for cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Back to a neutral spine, start to extend the legs back for a plank pose and we simply move the hips up and back to downward facing dog. It's the first downward facing dog of this practice, so I highly recommend for wherever you are to bend the knees first, press into the insides of your hands, move the chest towards the thighs and stay there and breathe. Make sure that you're still following that breath, slow in and slow out. Then you can start to straighten one leg and then the other. Simply walk your dog, see how that feels. Lengthening the back side of one leg and then the other. And with the shoulders nice and open, you then look for and come into a position that feels right. It doesn't matter if the heels are on the ground, really no one cares. It doesn't matter how it looks. You want to be stable and comfortable in this position. And the right alignment is where you put your awareness. Start to lift the heels, walk the feet forward between the hands. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway, lengthen the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Hang out here, interlace or grab the elbows. Let the upper body hang heavy, the head hang heavy. Maybe sway left and right. Close your eyes if you want to, because then we can oftentimes feel even more precisely, even better. Try to keep the legs straight. Release the hands down and we roll up through the spine to standing from the bottom of the spine all the way to the top. Take your time to get there. Take your time to come up to standing. Try to keep the legs straight. Move slow. The head comes up last. Reach the arms up. Inhale. Palms touch. Exhale. Hands down to the heart. Bring the wrists in line with the elbows, press the palms together, stand tall and release the hands down. Internally rotate the hands, chin to the chest and we roll down with straight legs from the top to the bottom of the spine all the way down into a forward fold. Once you're there, take a deep breath in, lift up halfway, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step the left foot back for low lunge. Lower the left knee down. Untuck the left toes. Reach the arms up. Engage the left glute so you can open the left front hip even more. Send the hips forward and down. Gently pull the right knee back 
towards the center of the mat and reach the arms up a bit more. Breathe into this sensation in the left front hip. Last deep breath in. Exhale, hands down. For a runner's lunge, come to the left toes, lift the left knee up. Now, if you have a block, use it here, left hand inside the right foot, reach the right arm up. Try to keep the right hip nice and low so we find this rotation only in the upper body or mostly. Reach the right fingertips up towards the ceiling. And we breathe here in this position. So as we move through all these positions, we focus on the breath and the positions help us to breathe better and we also practice breathing in these positions. Reach the right arm forward, up and over the head. Release the right hand down inside the right foot. Straighten both legs, pivot both feet to the left for a standing straddle forward fold. You can go as wide with the feet as you want. Fold forward and down. Just make sure that the heels are wider apart than the toes. Try to keep those legs straight. Let the upper body, the head hang heavy. If there's any other variation you want to take, then feel free to do so. Let's take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. On the exhale, Skandasana to the left, bend your left knee, straighten the right, but keep the left heel on the ground, hands to the heart, so we make this more of an active side squat. So you really want to feel into the left thigh. Make sure the left quad, the thigh, is going in the same direction as the left foot. From here we move to the front of the mat for a crescent lunge. Right foot down, lift the left heel up. Bend the right leg, reach both arms up. Same thing as in low lunge, engage the left glute to open the left front hip. And if you want, you can straighten your left leg a bit more, but keep the right leg nice and bent. Make sure you can see the right big toe inside the right knee. Draw the belly in, reach the arms up. Fingertips are engaged, the breath is soft and slow with the inhale and the exhale. Now reach the arms back, shift forward, bring more weight into the right foot. Slowly, slowly we step the left foot forward to meet the right for chair pose. Bring both feet together, both knees together. Bend the knees, reach both thumbs up. There's different variations of chair pose. Today we're doing this one. Send the hips back. Try to keep reaching the arms up towards the ceiling. Draw the belly in. On the exhale, straighten the legs, come up to standing. The palms touch over your head. Exhale, hands to the heart. Wrists in line with the elbows. Inhale, we reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, hands down, plank pose, step the feet back. You can always set the knees down if you want to. No need to be a hero with this practice. Again, it's not about how it looks. Focus more on how it feels that the functionality is fulfilled and is right, that it's safe, that it's comfortable and also stable. Firm into the inner hands, push the ground away a bit more, engage those glutes, and let's shift forward, come high onto the toes, maybe knees down now, bend the arms, lower all the way down with control. Keep the elbows in as you lower down, all the way down. Untuck the toes, bring the legs as wide apart as the mat, slide the hands forward for Sphinx pose. We are on the forearms. The forearms are parallel to the ground. Uh, forearms are parallel to another. And we open the front body, engage the glutes and breathe into 
more length as you open the front of your body. Look straight ahead or down in front of you. If you feel like going deeper, you can press into the palms, straighten your arms for seal pose. Last deep breath in. Exhale, release all the way down to the ground. Check out the hips left and right. Now you can move the hips back to child's pose if you want, or press up to a plank if you want to do the pushing up motion of a push up. Up to you. I will move back to child's pose. And then we all meet in downward facing dog. Let's take a deep breath in together, lift the heels. On the exhale, walk the feet forward between the hands. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Keep the legs straight, roll up to standing. Inhale from the bottom of the spine to the top. The head comes up last. Arms reach up, palms touch. Exhale, hands to the heart, wrists in line with the elbow. Release the hands down, inhale, arms up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, step the right foot back, low lunge, untuck the right toes, reach the arms up when you're ready. Engage the right glute, open the right front hip, send the hips down and forward, draw the left heel back. Lengthen the tailbone down as you reach up through the arms, through the fingers. And now that we're here and we have established a good position, you focus on the breath. This is what it's all about. The breath and the journey inwards. Yoga is not the poses, not the movements, it's an internal practice. So even if you do not practice any poses and only meditation to go on this path inwards, you're also a yogi. But if you're only practicing movement but no meditation, I'll leave that for yourself. You can answer that for yourself. Last deep breath in. Exhale, hands down. Runners lunge and side, uh, revolved side angle right hand down inside the left foot maybe on a block reach the left arm up with every inhale you lengthen the spine forward with the exhale possibly rotate a bit more to the left keep the left hip down keep energizing up through the left fingers On your inhale, left arm up and over the head. Exhale, left hand down inside the left foot. Straighten both legs. Standing straddle, forward fold, prasarita. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, fold down. The heels are wider apart than the toes. Any other variation in this position is welcome. Deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, Skandasana to the right. The high variation again, hands to the heart. Work a little bit more into the right quad. Feel it, connect to it, breathe into it. And from here we move forward to a crescent lunge. Inhale, reach the arms up. Keep a nice bend in your left knee. Perhaps straighten the right leg a little bit more. Feel the right glute engage and the fingertips are actively reaching up as you soften the breath. On your exhale, fly the arms back, lean forward. 
but keep a gap between the upper body and the thigh if you can. You shift even more forward, eventually step the right foot forward, both feet together for chair pose. Feet together, knees together, reach the arms up. Send the hips back and down, bend the knees even more. And if you want, start to lift your heels up so you're only on the toes. Draw the belly in. Deep breaths here, especially if it gets challenging, if the mind gets more activated, calm it down with the breath. And let's bend the knees, squat all the way down. We set the hips down. Bring the hands behind you, bring the feet a bit wider apart than the hips. The fingertips are pointing forward. We lift the hips up for reverse tabletop. You only lift up as high as it feels good, as high as you can, without forcing it so much. Again, we're looking for the ease and the effort, a nice balance of the two. Start to gently move the hips forward and back. Notice if that creates any sensation in the front side of your shoulder. Bring more awareness to it, breathe into it. And let's lower the hips, straighten the legs so the hips come between the hands and lower the hips all the way down. We're coming into a seated forward fold, so I recommend that you bend the knees so that you can grab the outsides of the feet and then you start to move the hips back. And wherever you feel a strong sensation in the back side of your leg, legs, the back side of your maybe back, somewhere else, that's where you stay and breathe. And for some, this is here. For some, in order to feel it, is with the legs straight and with the face between the legs. And then you go for that if that's what you need. But is the person that can come into all these deep poses and can do all the moves and poses and all the, the things, is that really the advanced yogi? Or is it the one that's sitting in meditation, going on to that journey inward and just doing movements and poses and shapes to support this journey, to support the meditation practice? Hard to say from the outside, so it really depends on the intention. The practice of yoga is to achieve the evenness of mind, the calmness, balance in the mind, so that from there you can go into the heart and really remember who you are, your true self. Not the self you think you are with your job, with the money, with the person, the people around you. The true self. The self that remains when you leave your body. That is what we want to discover and explore and experience. So it's not something you believe in and you read somewhere. It's practical. It's experience. And yoga is this path of experiencing this. With the disciplined practice of meditation in support with movement, breathwork, diet, rest, the philosophy and the ways to behave within yourself and within society. 
Slowly release, place the hands down, push yourself back up. This was lots of talking, I know. Some people will like it and some people will not. Move the hips forward, shake out the hips, uh, shake out the legs, the calves. And let's come onto the back for happy baby, so readjust on your mat. For happy baby, you bend the knees, grab behind the knees or grab the outsides of the feet. Whatever is accessible, whatever feels good. If you want to do something else, go for it. Close your eyes already. We're preparing ourselves for Shavasana and the whole practice was a preparation for the short meditation we will do in the end. Maybe you want to extend that meditation and just sit longer even though the video ends. Let's hug both knees into the chest wherever you are. Take a deep breath in, give yourself a nice hug. Hold your breath for a moment at the top. Take a little bit more air in. Open mouth, exhale, let it go. And extend the legs forward for Shavasana. Bring the hands, the arms alongside your body. Palms facing upwards, let the feet fall open into their natural position. Simply relax here, relax the body. Relax from the toes, the feet, ankle, all the way up the legs, the knees, the thighs. Relax those hips, your belly, your lower back, your chest, your abdomen. Relax the shoulders, the upper arms. Relax your elbows, the forearms. Relax your wrists. Relax your fingers. Relax your neck and the area of your throat. Relax your ears, the jaw, the tongue. Relax the face muscles, the forehead. Relax your eyelids, your eyes. Relax the crown of your head. Let the whole body relax. It's okay and much needed to relax. Once the body is relaxed, Start to pay more attention to the breath. The mouth is closed. You're breathing only through the nose. The air is coming in through the nose and out through the nose. Focus on that area of your nostrils where the air enters. And focus on that same area, how the air leaves your body. And you focus on that fully. This is the simplest form of meditation already. Practicing concentration. But it doesn't mean that it's easy. In fact, I believe it's one of the hardest things as humans that we can do to be with ourselves in silence, to really face ourselves and to dive into ourselves. Who are we truly? Who are you truly? 
What are you here for to do on this earth? What is this life all about? How does it all work? The answers are within, in the silence. They will reveal themselves to you once the mind is focused and even. Then all the insights will come. The insights come after we have established concentration. Once we are focused and we have a good intention that we actually follow. Start to deepen your breath. When you're ready, move the fingers, the feet. Gently move the body to wake the body back up. But keep that focus of the breath. Keep that mental focus, this one-pointedness. You start to simply transition into a seated position. So bend the knees. Roll over to one side. With your eyes closed, gently push yourself up to a seated position. Try to move slow, feeling where you are in space. Feeling how is the body moving. What is moving? Place your hands wherever it's comfortable. Sit tall. So that the energy can flow through the body, through the spine. And continue to observe the breath. How the air is flowing in and out through the nose. And the mind starts to get distracted by thoughts. Sometimes we notice it quick. Sometimes, especially for the beginner, it takes maybe several minutes until you notice that you got distracted. Either way is fine. Acknowledge it. It's great that you noticed because then you can redirect your attention back to the breath. The air coming in through the nostrils and out through the nostrils. This is the path inward.
And this is the practice of yoga. One of the forms of yoga that exist. But all leading to the same goal. Yoga is the practice as well as the goal. Remembering that you are whole, that you are united. That your self is no different than the universal self. But first we have to discover that self within. That self that never dies, even though the body changes. Once we are truly connected to that, then we can practice to overcome the illusion that this self is separate from the universal self, the great consciousness, the great spirit. Fully experiencing the oneness of all beings. Slowly bring your hands to the heart. Thank yourself for showing up. Thank yourself for making more time for meditation. For making more time to sit with yourself in stillness, in silence. Just you and yourself. This should be the best company and the best time. If it's not, continue practicing. So that you can remove all the things that hinder you to have a good time with yourself. Thank you very much for practicing with me today. For allowing me to share this practice with you. I'll see you in the next one. With love and gratitude. Namaste.